Yo, what's good, YouTube? This is Jay from TNJ, and welcome back to the Houston Oilers franchise. The Oilers are one and two to start season number five. A little bit of a Super Bowl hangover, but we can get right and get back to 500 with a big win on the road at the Chargers as they are 3-0. and Now remember, this Chargers team was picking top five in the draft last season. They obviously traded away their first round pick for Rashawn Gary, but now they are looking to really make a run here in this division. They have been pretty much second or third in this division this entire series and last year they were fourth but now they are 3-0 one of the eight 3-0 teams in the league to start the year and they have MVP version of Justin Herbert 11 touchdowns one interception in this three game win streak he looks really really good this year and he hasn't added some a lot of big weapons he's added a couple of them but nothing that's been game changing so it's really been justin herbert who's been playing spectacular isaiah spiller is still the running back they did not add to the running back room really but then they didn't really add to the receivers at all they did get an improvement last year out of johnny franklin who is now going into his fourth season and just looking at the stats so far you know he has been pretty impressive the last couple of years but here in the draft, they drafted Emmanuel Anderson, and they're not even getting him the ball. He is really, right now, their primary kick returner and punt returner. He was drafted at the top of the second round. But they do have a really good defense, and that's one thing that they've built up. And they're led by Ladarius Strickland, who had 12 and a half sacks as a D tackle last year. Doesn't have any this year so far through three games. They also still have Joey Bosa, the veteran, 33 years old. He's about to go going into his uh, 33 years old a year, and he is aging. But they did add Rashawn Gary, and those three combined make a pretty daunting front to go up against. So our tackles and our offensive line are really going to have you know a tough assignment today. And they still found a way to retain Derwin James. Even after that tough season, he stuck around with the team. And he is still the number one rated strong safety in the league. But on our side, we get some good news going into this episode. Keon Carter has returned from injury. He had a two-week to three-week injury with turf toe. But he will be missing Jesse Fisher Jr., who was hurt last episode. And with a broken collarbone out four weeks, we will be placing him on IR to create a roster spot. So I go to receivers in free agency and I look at a couple of guys. DJ Chark is one. DJ Chark has always been a guy with great size and speed combination. Maybe he hasn't lived up to exactly what he was supposed to be, but still a decent receiver. Then there's KJ Osborne, but he is a little smaller. Um, and I want to get a guy that is, you know, has some size to him here. And I'm going to go and sign Nico Collins, six foot four. He is 28 years old still. Obviously, he's not a young guy anymore and probably done developing. So we will sign him in the meantime of Jesse Fisher Jr. being out. And he will play at some point today. So here we go. Let's get this game underway as we are in this beautiful new stadium at SoFi. And let's see what happens here as the Houston Oilers look for their second straight win of the season. But it's going to be tough going up against the undefeated Chargers. This will mark the third opponent in our division we will be playing so far through four games. First carry of the game is Isaiah Spiller, and he picks up a gain of nine. Second and one throw to the right side. That is Casey Burton with the coverage on Quinton Johnston, who is now assuming that number one wide receiver role is now third and one here is a rpo action and that one is caught it's going to be their backup tight end scott and he picks up about a gain of one he needed one yard he got one so at their own 30 here's a throw to the sideline and that is caught by scott again after a penalty that brings them back to the original line of scrimmage it's now a third and nine at the 36 now, here is Herbert throwing to left side. What a great comeback route. It's going to be Joshua Palmer, who is an oiler killer in this series. I don't know what it is about Joshua Palmer, but every time we play him, he goes off. 
Play action fake throw across the middle, and that's a great play. It's Bradley Collier going into his second year. And you know the funny thing is, is that I thought Bradley Collier had just an okay year. He got beat quite a bit. Here's a throw to the left side, and there's another play by Collier. Back-to-back -back stops here for Bradley Collier, and it brings it to a fourth and five. The Chargers will go for it here at the 38 instead of kicking the field goal. Herbert throwing across the middle. It's a wide open man and a first down here for the Chargers. Herbert five of nine on this opening drive. That time it's Chase Claypool. Nine passes to one run here on this opening drive. Here's a throw to the right side. That's another catch by Scott. And the backup tight end has been busy today. At the 11 now. This drive is still going. Herbert rolls to the right, throws all the way back to the left, and he's got a man pushed out of bounds at the one. This is an extremely long drive here, and they're using their tight ends well. First and goal, handoff. Isaiah Spiller stops in the backfield at the one. He's back at the four-yard line after that one. It's Christian Barmore who is in there. And now third and goal, throwing in zone, caught. It's Joshua Palmer for the touchdown. And the Chargers will strike here first after a very long drive. That was a 15-play drive. Incredible. So here is Keon Carter back from injury. And Davion Spikes was below 50% completion percentage. And it's time to maybe get some accuracy at quarterback. Here is the first run of the game, and it's Gibson breaking free to the 30, the 20. He's out of gas, but he will score anyway. Touchdown. What an answer by the Oilers, and it's A.G. Antonio Gibson who has found his footing after a slow start through the first two games, and on the first play, he takes it to the house. That's why you give him that big contract. It's 7-7. So quickly, Herbert's back out onto the field with this. Probably a little bit of gassed offense. Here's a throw across the middle. It's not going to matter at all. It's a first down here. And that is the rookie, Emmanuel Anderson. That's his first catch of the season, by the way. Here is a throw across the middle, and that one is going to be caught. Joshua Palmer, a gain of six. Here's a throw to left side again. It's Palmer. He catches this one, and he stays on his feet. 11 of 16 for Herbert. We knew he was in MVP form, but he looks great throwing the football to these three guys. Here is Herbert now under center now, handing the football off to Isaiah Spiller, and he gets pushed forward. And a guy to look out for on a defensive line is Javon Dexter. We signed him in the offseason to a free agent deal, but we'll see because he hasn't made too much of an impact. He could be in jeopardy of losing his spot. Here's a throw on the run. This one's Johnny Franklin. It's a touchdown. They're using all three tight ends here in this offense. And wow, it has resulted in a great start to this game here for the Chargers. It's 14 to seven. Here is Carter now under center now. Run the football. Oh, Gibson almost broke free again. And he's tackled from behind. It's a gain of six. Derwin James probably saved a touchdown right there again. At the 25, here's Gibson finding the hole, breaking a tackle, and it looks like we've exploited something with their defense. We all know they have the good pass rush. Ladarius Strickland, 12 and a half sacks last year. Joey Bosa and Gary, but it looks like they can't stop the run. Here is Keon Carter taking off up the middle. He gets hit hard. The ball is on the ground, but it's picked up by Danny Rudd. Whoa. So we tried to run the ball with Keon Carter that time, and we luckily pick it up. Play action fake now, throw it to the right side, and this one's caught by Rudd for the first completion of the game with 20 seconds left in the first quarter. Can you believe it? That was the first attempt. So now we're in field goal range just about at the 32. Here's a throw to the end zone, looking for Quincy Hall, and that one is knocked to the ground. Asante Samuel Jr. in coverage. And now it is third and seven. Still at the 29 now. Here's a throw up the seam. It's caught. It's David Lewis Jr., an undrafted free agent, second year pro. He was a rookie last year, had a big uh, game versus the Chiefs in the playoffs. If you remember that one, he had two catches for about 70 yards. 
Here is Gibson now inside the 10, and that carry will put him at 100 yards already with just five carries. Second and goal now at the four. Gibson finding the space. It's a touchdown. And Gibson will score here and tie this ball game up. His second rushing touchdown of the game. It looks like he's headed for a big time performance here on the road. So here is Herbert now throwing to left side. This one is intended for Joshua Palmer. This time Alani Rutherford breaks that pass up. As now they're at the 39 again. Here's a quick throw back to Palmer. And he's going to be attacking Alani Rutherford today. And if he keeps doing it, Lottie Rutherford actually has a track record of getting some interceptions. Third and one, handoff. It's Isaiah Spiller stopped in the backfield. It's everybody, Dave Washington, Barmore. Everybody was in the backfield that time for the stop. So we do get a punt here, here in the first half. The first one, here's Carter throwing deep to David Lewis Jr. And that one is knocked away. LaMarcus Mills, who was one of their best draft picks of this series so far. He's now in his third year. Here's a big run. It's going to be a big time run. A.G., he picks up the first down. And why not keep running the football if it's working? And the Houston Oilers have found a formula for this Chargers defense. Another run up the middle. It's Gibson again. And another first down, a gain of 12. Eight carries, 129. I think the Chargers are at a loss. I don't think they've faced a team like us so far this year. The balance is real. Here's Carter throwing to left side. It's a wide open Quincy Hall. How does he get that wide open? And it's a first down. There was nobody on the left side of the field. So at the 50 now, a second and nine. Here is Carter rolling, and he just throws this one out of bounds. Only three of six. We haven't needed to throw the ball too much in this game. It's now third and nine. We have to throw the ball now. Here is Carter throwing to the right side, looking for David Lewis, and it's knocked away by Asante Samuel Jr., and we will have to punt the ball back to the Chargers. So under four minutes to go here in the first half. Here is Herbert throwing to the left side. I thought a Rutherford was going to intercept it. Instead, it's Palmer down the sideline, tackled at the 20. Oh my goodness, Joshua Palmer, every time we play him, we just can't stop him. He's over 100 yards already, seven for 123. There is a quick throw out to the tight end, and that's a big hit by Alani Rutherford. It looks like Casey Burton's gonna have to come out the game. It looks like he's shaking up. Here's a throw to the end zone. This one's caught. It's Bradley Collier in coverage, and he was guarding Johnny Franklin, and he will score. How about the tight ends in this offense? I don't know what it is. A new revamped offense for the Chargers as they get three tight ends involved in this offense. So here is Carter now back on the field. About two minutes to go. There's a nice throw to his favorite target, Danny Rudd, and he gets to the 50, and he moves the chains. We have all three timeouts. We are not in a hurry here. A minute 20 to go. Here is Carter dropping back, throwing short. This one for Jake Hawkins. And that picks up a gain of five. We were hurrying up to the line now. Trips to the left side. Deion Branson in the game now. Here is Carter stepping up, throwing. Downfield, a wide open Quincy Hall. It's a touchdown. Quincy Hall will score, and he will tie this ball game up. And Quincy Hall has all the tools to be the number one receiver in this receiving room. And he's got the size, he's got the speed, he's got the hands, he's got it all. 21 nothing. it's been a back and forth game here to start. Here is a throw out to left side, it's a screen pass to Isaiah Spiller. And that picks up a first down, gain of 11. And the Chargers call their first time out. Here's a quick throw again, this time it's caught. And it's going to be Emmanuel Anderson, the rookie. And he's got his second catch of the ball game. Herbert throws to the right side. He's got Quentin Johnston this time, and Rutherford is getting picked on today. It looks like they're not going to throw Casey Burton's way. They're picking on Rutherford. So now first and 10 now at the 37, another quick throw. This is Isaiah Spiller, and he has that one. They have one timeout, and they wait until 10 seconds to call it. They bring in the kicker, and this will be good, 24-21. An interesting game here, back and forth. 
and the Chargers 3-0, and and we have been able to run the ball well, we got to get some stops on D. It's 24-21. to So here we go, second half action. We do start out with the football. Here's another run to start out. Here is A.G. around the edge. He gets a first down, a gain of 14 yards. And what a game A.G. is having today. He's in the zone. Got to give it back to him now. Good blocking up front. Another big run. This time it goes for a gain of nine. Now, I was very, very hesitant after the uh, second, first and second game of the season about um, user run blocking. It seems like AG is starting to get warmed up now, and that and that uh, slider isn't really affecting us, and I think we're getting some pretty good gameplay out of this. Here is Carter now rolling to the right side, throwing on the run. He's got Quincy Hall and Jake Hawkins in the same area. I don't know what happened on that one. Quincy Hall should have had it. It's third and 11 now. Carter in the pocket, still in the pocket, throwing to the right side. He's got David Lewis Jr. Good blocking by the offensive front, and it's a first down. Holding up the protection was crucial on that play. Back to Gibson, handoff up the middle, and he's got a gain of 10. 14 for 170. He could be going for his personal high as now he gets to the 18. Play action fake for Carter, throwing across the middle. It's Quincy Hall. He's got it at the two-yard line, and it's goal to go. Carter has been great in his return here to the lineup. Now at the one, handoff back to Gibson, make it touchdown number three. And Gibson will score, and now we have the lead. What a start to this second half. So now it's 28 to 24. We kick it deep to the rookie, Emmanuel Anderson, as the Chargers get their first possession here to start the second half, but they won't need it. It's Anderson up the middle to the 30, the 20, the 10, touchdown. And the Chargers' top draft pick will take back his first career kick return for a touchdown. Emmanuel Anderson drafted in the second round. Gives the Chargers the three-point lead. So here we are back on offense. And there is Carter going down. He fumbles it, but he will fall on his own fumble. And Carter is shaking up on the play. This will be his second injury this season. I don't know what it was because he did get up. And that inserts Davion Spikes into the lineup. So in his return, he gets hurt. It's third and 20. Here is Spikes throwing deep for David Lewis Jr., who goes up and gets it. It's a catch at the 27-yard line. David Lewis Jr. is showing up, and he gets playing time from Jesse Fisher Jr. getting hurt, and he just makes a play. You want to know how to earn playing time? That's it right there over one of the best safeties in the game as well, Derwin James. Wow, what a play at the 24 now. Play action fake to Gibson. Here's a throw deep to the right side. This is a diving catch. It's Keon Carter back in the game, and he finds Jake Hawkins. It's goal to go after that diving catch, and now we find ourselves at the one. Handoff, AG fighting in, touchdown. And another touchdown added to his total. And the Oilers will regain the lead. What a back and forth game. And we're still in the third quarter. So here is Herbert now back out onto the field, orchestrating this offense. We've seen a big game from Manuel Anderson. Here's a throw to the right side. It's Quinn Johnston all alone. It's a touchdown. He somehow beat a Lottie Rutherford off the line, who's having an awful game today. And Herbert finds him. Wow. This game is just crazy. And it's 38-35 in the Chargers' favor. Here we are running the football to start the next drive. Both teams are probably gassed. So much back and forth today. As he gets a gain of three, and now it's third and seven at the, our own 26. Here is Carter. In the pocket, getting hit on the throw. Joey Bosa gets to him and causes the incompletion. And now here comes Herbert back out onto the field, 38-35. A touchdown here will make it a two-score lead. It will make it tough for us in the fourth. 
Here is Herbert in the pocket, throwing across the middle. That's caught. It's Johnny Franklin, the tight end. 23 of 34 touchdowns for Herbert. Now at the 44, looks like he is changing the play up, trying to confuse the defense perhaps. Here he is under center. He's, is he going to hand it off? No, it's a play action fake. He throws left side, and this one is caught, and it's Joshua Palmer. I have no idea what type of route that was, but the defense seemed confused. So now at the 31 now, Herbert changing the play again. As here he is in the shotgun, in the pocket, throwing to left side. This one's intercepted. It's Bryce Hall, the veteran. He comes up with the turnover and gives us possession right back. What a play by Bryce Hall, just undercutting that route. And he was looking for the rookie, Emmanuel Anderson. And that one's not going to work versus a veteran. So here we go now with about nine minutes to go. Here's a big time run. It's A.G. juking to the open field. He's got a big first down over 200 yards for the first time this season. He's done that multiple times in this series. I mean, what's new at this point? At the 42 now, another run up the middle. That one only goes for a gain of three. 24 carries for Gibson. That matches a season high, by the way. Here is Carter throwing across the middle, and that's going to be incomplete. It was intended for Jake Hawkins, and now we're down by three with six and a half minutes. We're going to go for it here for a fourth and seven conversion. Here is Carter throwing across the middle. It's caught. It's Quincy Hall. He steps right in front of LaMarcus Mills and makes the catch. A little luck involved, and it's a first down. Wow. This game is just insane. Here's a toss play to left side. It's Gibson trying to find some space, and he does lose two back at the 30-yard line. We are still in field goal range, but it's a third and 12. We want the six points instead of the three here. Here is Carter in the pocket, rolling. He has all day. He throws to the sideline looking for David Lewis, and he can't hold on. If he would have held on to that one, a fourth and two, we likely would go for it, but instead we bring in Pudlesny, for the field goal and he knocks it through from 47 yards out and we got ourselves a tie ball game so five minutes to go here for the Chargers they have plenty of time here is a run to the right side that is going to be Isaiah Spiller they haven't given him the ball much only eight for 33 he picks up nine quick throw to left side this one is Joshua Palmer again and it's a first down the Chargers eventually get it across the 50 here at the 35, just on the edge of field goal range. Here is Herbert, under pressure, he goes down. It's Dave Washington on the pressure, and he will apply the sack right there. Now they get it to the 42, a deep shot, looking for Quentin Johnston, and they go at Casey Burton for the first time since the first throw of the game. Crazy, and now it's third and 16 at the 42. Herbert, under pressure, he goes down, it's Manny Babino. I just got done last episode saying Manny Babino is just one of those guys that hasn't hit the stat sheet hard, but you can just see it when he gets in, he gives maximal effort. And now we get the ball back after a punt. We start this drive at our 11, here's a run up the middle, and that is a gain of three, and we're going to have to call a timeout. Sean Harris is down on the play. So now, second and seven, another quick throw, and that's caught by Hall. We have a minute 45 to go, and we have two timeouts. We have plenty of time here. Here's Carter throwing to left side. That's incomplete, but a flag on the play, and the refs are going to call pass interference on the defense on Asante Samuel, so we get the free first down. So at the 35 now, here's a throw to the right side, looking for Hall deep, and that one's knocked away. Asante Samuel on the stop again. Third and six. They send six. Here's a quick throw. It's Danny Rudd who's got it. Staying on his feet and pushed out of bounds for a first down. They sent the cover zero blitz. It didn't work. Here's Carter now in the pocket. Stepping up. And he goes down. It's Ladarius Strickland. Twelve and a half sacks a year ago. Loss of three. 15 seconds to go. Here is Carter throwing. It's a wide open Gibson down the sideline, pushed out at the 28. 
in a busted coverage by the Chargers results in a game-changing play by the veteran linebacker and reigning offensive player of the year in the off in the AFC. And Gibson just gets wide open. It's an easy throw. Corey Birmingham checks into the game. The six-round pick out of Washington State gets 13, and he gets us into a better position to kick this field goal. And we bring in Jack Pudlesny for the game-winning field goal. The kick is good. What a game by both teams, but the Oilers come out on top in a shootout, giving the Chargers their first loss of the year. 41-38. What an epic battle. Herbert, four touchdowns, one crucial interception. And Carter in his return, 14 of 27. And he wasn't asked to do a whole lot because Gibson carried the load today, 26 for 219. And how about Corey Birmingham got in on that last carry, 13 yards on that carry. Pretty good from him. He's a six-round pick, by the way. After seeing how he exploded when he got the handoff, I definitely want to explore that a little bit more. So expect some Corey Birmingham carries next game. But defensively, man, giving up that many points, that was not good. And maybe it could be time, even though our defense is rated really, really high, it could be time for some changes. I'm not sure what those changes look like, but it seemed like we could not stop the pass at all. I don't know what it was but we just couldn't stop Justin Herbert in that offense. And maybe it was just a Justin Herbert thing. Who knows? But coming off of that game, since we got the win, Casey Burton will start next game with the X factor highlighted and activated. But we will face the Lions, who are also 2-2 two and two now. And Gibson gets Offensive Player of the Week. No surprise there. But we will get to face DTR, our former starting quarterback, in what will be a game with a lot of emotion. But DTR is signed to a long-term deal with the Lions, and he got paid a lot of money. He brought them to the playoffs in his first year as a starter there. But in the first round, they drafted a quarterback, Chad Banks out of Nebraska, in the first round pick 19. So I'm very, very interested on what they're going to do there because is it just the Jordan Love situation where they draft a young guy and develop him for a few years? It probably is that, but we'll see. Because DTR, since getting to the playoffs in his first year starting, he's now been the starter there for three years, has not made it past that first round of the playoffs. So it's going to be interesting. And then there's Matthew Pitts, who they drafted number one overall in the same year they acquired DTR. And he has one and a half sacks in three seasons. He is definitely one of the biggest busts I've seen in Madden because being drafted number one and being mid-80s overall, he would expect to produce, but he is not at all. So next game, Detroit on the road and the Cleveland Browns. We'll see what happens coming out of that game. Hit subscribe. Hit that like button. Stay tuned. Let's get it. Let's go. I like getting money. I got time to get it. Target on me, so my car's a tenny. Dancing with the devil, I don't bargain with it. Bobbing in a dash and the stick is with it. And I hit the 4-5 on the wet side. But I'm from the east side, that's how we slide, that's how we ride, yeah, yeah, that's how we ride.